Swifter, no need to set a reminder for this. It is time to finish the to-do list app. We're going to work on detecting when the app has moved into the foreground, and we're going to add an icon to the app. We'll cover a few issues in here. We'll identify and fix an edge case for better app behavior. We'll work with a notification center by adding a notification center observer. We'll trigger a function when the app moves to the foreground and becomes the active app. We'll have some final user interface polish. We'll remove a text field outline. We'll add large navigation titles. We'll add an app icon and we'll show that your app can send alerts to an Apple Watch. Swift Squad, it's time to finish that app. One of the things that can be challenging for developers is thinking through and testing all of the scenarios in which your app is being used. Now, there are sometimes things that you haven't thought of, these edge cases of non-standard use that make your app behave in unexpected ways or that can even crash your app or corrupt your data. We'll be considering just a single edge case, no crash or data corruption here, and it's a relatively unlikely scenario, but if you're fortunate enough to have an app that's widely used by a large user base, the law of large numbers suggests that unlikely scenarios can become likely ones. So the situation that we'll tackle is this. If a user is entering a notification and then decides that they want to turn notifications off and they exit the app, they open up settings and in the settings for the app, they turn off allow notifications and then return to the app. When the app is brought to the forefront, it should turn off all switches so as not to convey that a reminder is set when it really isn't. Unfortunately, our app isn't detecting when it comes to the foreground and we can't address the situation. So let's change that. Now we need to do three things to detect when an app has moved to the foreground. First, we're going to be using Notification Center, so we need to import the User Notifications Framework in any class where we want to use this technique. Next, we need to add what's called an Observer to the Notification Center. This will allow the Notification Center to detect if an app becomes active. That means it's been moved to the foreground. Finally, we'll set the function to go off when the app becomes active, and we'll write a function to perform the requests of this action, a selector function. In our case, it's just a call to update reminder switch, which will turn off the reminder switch if notifications aren't allowed. So this problem only occurs in the to do detail table view controller, so that's where we're going to work. We'll first import user notifications, then we'll go down into view did load, and right near the top I'll add to the notification center what's called an observer that will be looking for a particular event. It's going to look for the did become active notification, which happens when a notification moves to the foreground, and when it does, I'll tell it to run a function which is going to call our update reminder switch function. So here in view did load I'll add a comment that says set up foreground notification, then I'm going to create a constant. I actually don't don't need to do this, but it'll shorten my code a bit. So I'll say let notification center equal capital notification capital center dot default. And then on the next line, I can just say notification center dot add, and I'm going to search for the add observer method. And that's this one that has the arguments observer, selector, name, and object. And you can see down here in code completion, it says adds an entry to the notification center dispatch table with an observer and a notification selector and an option notification name and sender. So press return on that one. For the four parameters in there, I'll put in self for the first one, so this is going to be attached to the current view controller. For the selector, I'm going to put in pound selector, that's one word, and the pound sign is the symbol of many names, so maybe it's the hashtag or the number sign for you. Open parentheses, Xcode adds the other parentheses, and inside I'm going to give it the name of a function I'm about to write, I haven't written yet, which will go off whenever the particular notification I'm looking for is detected. And the name of this function I'm about to write, which I haven't yet, is app active notification. You could call it whatever you want, but I think that's a good name. Then I'll tab over to this argument that's called name. The name in here is looking for a specific kind of iOS notification. It says nsnotification.name. So if I enter ui.application.did, then I can see all the notification names that are available inside of my application. These are all predefined by iOS. I'm going to find and select this one here that says did become active notification. Code completion says it's posted when the app becomes active. Excellent press return, and then for object, we just pass in nil. That's all we need to do to set up the notification center again. We could have done it on one line, we did it on two. Now see this error that comes up here? It says use of unresolved identifier app active notification. That's the name of the function we're about to write, so that's why we're getting this error, so let's write this function. I'll put it just below view did load. And when we write this function, we've got to do it in a way that we haven't done before. We have to say at objc for objective c this particular function needs to interact with some older parts of ios that were written in objective c instead of in swift 
Don't worry if you didn't add this, you'd actually get an error from Xcode and Xcode would tell you to add it. It's just a legacy that we need to do whenever we add a selector. And I'm sure in future updates to Swift and Xcode, this will eventually go away when everything's been written in native Swift. So then we say func, I'll paste in the function name I had inside the selector parentheses above, that's app active notification open and close parentheses, open and close curlies. Inside, I'll print a message to the console. How about the app just came to the foreground, dash cool exclamation point, and I'll put in the surprise emoji. And underneath that, we'll call update reminder switch. That's this function at the end that checks to see if the app is allowed to show notifications. And if not, it'll turn off the reminder switch. Let's build and run, see how this works. Now we get our warning. The user has denied notifications. This is nothing new. This isn't what we added yet. We've got to set things up a little bit since notifications are denied. So I'll go into adding a new notification. I'll shift command H to go home, open the settings app, turn on allow notifications, shift command H twice. That's the simulator shortcut to get into the iOS app switcher. Select my to-do list app. I'll just type in, this is new, will it shut off? Shift command H twice again, that'll bring me back to settings, then I can click on settings, I can turn off notifications. Now watch when I shift command H twice again, here's our moment of truth. We were allowing notifications, the switch was in green. Now when we click on our app, the notification center observer that we wrote did become active notification, is detected, so it runs the selector function app active notification. That first prints out surprise emoji, the app just came to the foreground, cool. That runs update reminder switch. That calls the local notification manager is authorized function. It prints out a message to the console that says cancel symbol, the user has denied notifications. Our app returns to execute the completion handler. So back in to do detail table view controller in this local notifications is authorized completion handler. We check to see if we're not authorized. It's true that we're not authorized. And is the reminder switch on? It is on. So we present an alert that says the user has not allowed notifications. We also turn off that reminder switch. We update everything. We've gotten rid of this edge case where the user might've gotten confused because it looks like they could have set a reminder. The switch was on when in fact they couldn't set the reminder. So now if this edge case occurs, we automatically shut off the reminder switch. We warn the user with an alert. Everything's working well. We've squashed this edge case issue. The user experience is improved. Nice work. And how about we do one final polish to the user interface? So let's see, we've currently got a very thin outline around our text field for the to-do item name. Let's get rid of the text field box. Since it occupies just about the whole cell, it doesn't really provide any value. Down in notes, this font is kind of small, so let's make that a little bit bigger. Why don't we increase the size of the font that we're using in our table view cells? And why don't we increase the size of the check boxes that we've got in here too? It'd also be nice if we used a large title, maybe that said to-do list right here, just above the table view, because that seems like the UI that most of Apple's apps are using currently. So let's make things look pretty one final time. So back in main storyboard in our to-do list view controller, I'm gonna click on the label inside of the table view cell, go to the attributes inspector. I'll put in some text so that I can see what the different size looks like. So this will just be some dummy text that says this will be a to-do item. I'll increase the font size to 24. Right at the end of my dummy text, I'm gonna put in a lowercase b and a lowercase g. This is a good way to get a look at if a label is sized properly. B, but really any capital letter, extends above the letter alignment line to show me what the tallest letter will look like. And lowercase g shows the maximum any letter will extend below the letter alignment line. And I've got too much text on this line, so let me fix that. But you'll see when you press return here, Xcode will automatically adjust the label height to make more room for these letters. Nice. I'll just reposition the label, change the text to this will be a to-do item, but that text is never gonna show in the app. Now to the left of our label, click on this button that shows either an empty rectangle or a rectangle with a checkbox in it. We'll increase the size of this. And remember where we do that, that's under default symbol configuration. And if you pull down the configuration menu, you can see that there's an option for point size. I'm gonna increase the point size for 24. That looks really good. I'll just make sure that everything is positioned nice. Then over into do detail table view controller, I'll click on my name text field. I'll put in some bogus text that says this will be a to do item. I'll increase the font to 24 point. I'll add a BG in the end just to make sure that things are aligned properly. This looks really good. So I'll get rid of the BG. I'll readjust the text field. Let's increase the label that shows the date. A 20 point font looks like a pretty good size. And down in our text view, we'll set that to a 20 point size too. 
Let's build and run. And oh, the other thing that I'd mentioned was getting rid of the box that's around the text field inside of our to-do detail table view controller. So let's do that right now. I'll go to the to-do detail table view controller. I'll click on the text field where we enter the to-do name, go to the attributes inspector, and look over here under where it says border style on the left-hand side. If you click on that one, it'll actually get rid of any border that is around the text field. Now, after you select that in Interface Builder, it still shows a faint border around the text field, but when you build and run, it won't show anymore. So let's go ahead and build and run and see how it looks. We still get the pop-up that says that we haven't allowed notifications, but our table view looks good. We've got a larger font, we've got a larger checkbox, and we've got a larger rectangle. Click on plus, we've got no box around that text field for the name. Oh, this font in the to-do item name is much nicer. It's nice and big. We can see the date label is larger. We can't change it right now, though, because we're still not allowing notifications. Click on the notes, though. I really like this font size. You can go ahead and turn on notifications. I'll just power through some of these tests, but everything is looking great. Oh, the one thing that I forgot to do was to increase the size of the navigation titles. Also, our app doesn't have an icon. I showed you how you can add your own in a previous video, but I've got one on GitHub that I'll grab in this video. You're welcome to use that if you'd like. Let's grab the icon first. So I'll head back to Xcode, click on the assets catalog, Catalog, and you can see where it says app icon. Well, I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to press delete to get rid of it. And I'll copy over the app icon set that I've added to the app that's up on GitHub. So you can open a browser, head over to this URL. It's github.com slash Gallagher. That's G-A-L-L-A-U-G-H-E-R, like gal, laugh, er, slash, and then it's to do dash list with a capital T, a capital D, and a capital L. And then you'll get to my GitHub repo. You can click on the green cloner download button. Why don't we click on download zip? I don't happen to be signed in right now, but I'll save this to the desktop. Then back on the desktop, I can find what I just downloaded. It's the folder to do dash list dash master. If your Mac didn't automatically decompress the zip file, just to find it on your desktop, double click the zip file and it'll decompress into this folder. Now, before I do anything in the master folder, I want to get into my old to-do list folder and make sure that I've opened up my Xcode project. So there it is. It's opened up. I've got my assets catalog opened. I don't have the app icon in here anymore. Now I'll return to the finder. I'm going to get inside of the to-do master folder. So that's the one that I downloaded. I'll double click to get inside of this project folder. Then inside here, I'm going to double click on the to-do list folder. In there, you'll find another folder which says assets.xc assets. That's where all of the assets catalog files are for the project I downloaded on GitHub. So I'll double click that folder too. And in there, I see the app icon dot app icon set folder. That's got all of the icons that were in the app that I downloaded from GitHub just to make sure that I'm in the right location. I click on the title of the folder in the title bar in the finder here. I can see if I look down here, yep, the folder hierarchy does show to do dash list dash master in here. So I'm in the right place. So don't make any selection from this menu, but do click on the app icon dot app icon set folder and drag that over into your app's assets catalog. When you let it go, it will copy over the icon set from the GitHub project to your own project. Now you have icon. And again, feel free to design and use your own icon. I'm not the best icon designer out there, but you're welcome to use this if you want something other than that generic icon that shows up when you install your app. Now let's set up our large navigation bar titles on our to-do list view controller. So we'll click on main storyboard, and I've never found setting titles in the navigation bars especially clear, but here's how to do this on the storyboard. You could do this programmatically too, but storyboard is fine. In the UI navigation controller, this guy on the left, the initial view controller for our project, click on its navigation bar up top. It'll be highlighted when it's selected, and then in the attributes inspector, select prefers large title. Then in the to do table view controller, select the navigation item. It's in the same place where we clicked on an item called navigation bar in the UI navigation controller. So that's a little confusing. Find the attribute that says large title and then select always from the pull down menu. Now Xcode doesn't update the look on the storyboard, but you've just set the title to show with large titles. Then up here in the title area, let's give it a title. How about to do list? And then finally, we don't want big titles to show in our to do detail table view controller. So let's go ahead and select that view controller. We'll click on the navigation item area in this view controller. And again, this is some squirrely Xcode behavior because we don't see the nav titles big in our previous view controller, but we do see them large here. So let's go ahead and click on the navigation item in this view controller and in the attributes inspector. Let's find large titles and select never. And then let's build and run and see how things look. 
And oh, notification access granted. And we've got our large title for to-do list. What happens when we click and examine the detail? The large title goes away just as we wanted. What if we add a new item? The large title is not there just as we wanted. So you have built a spectacular to-do list app. You can move items around. You can delete items. You can work with checkboxes. You can add items. You can set reminders. Everything is looking good. You've learned a ton of advanced topics as well as some solid software engineering principles, good design. You've crafted a solid user experience. And as Steve Jobs used to say, there's one more thing. If you install your to-do list app on an iOS device, so not the simulator, and if you have an Apple Watch that's paired to that device and an alert goes off when the app is not open on your phone, your watch will get an alert. Tweet out a photo of an app that you built with the iOS Code Crush hashtag, and you could be selected for one of these cool laptop stickers to tell the world you are an app app developer. Swifter, you built a really nice app. Hope you feel good about your skills. Let's keep at it. And congratulations.